Hey class, this is Mr. Bernard and we're looking at AP Environmental Science topic 2.4, Ecological Tolerance. Ecological tolerance is defined as the range of abiotic factors under which species can survive. And abiotic means non-living factors. We can, we can graph ecological tolerance here with survival rate on the y or vertical axis and the abiotic factors on the horizontal or x-axis. And if you don't know what abiotic factors we're talking about, it could be moisture, light, pH, salinity, temperature, da -da 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 -da, soil type. Uh, and the gr survival is graphed on a bell curve here. In the middle of the bell curve, we have good survival. And on the edges of the bell curve, it's not so good. In the middle, we call this the optimal tolerance zone. Further out, we call these the zones of stress. And at the very edges where species can't survive, we call that the zone of intolerance. Now, some species have very wide ranges of tolerance, and others have very narrow ranges of tolerance. Now, let's look at how that plays out with a species food source. Now, food sources aren't abiotic, but they are dependent on abiotic factors. The plants that grow are dependent on the, the soil and the pH and the temperature and the salinity and all that good stuff. So, we may have a species with a very narrow range of tolerance, and we call that species a specialist. <clears throat> If the species has a wide range of tolerance, we call that species a generalist. Now, with relation to food sources, let's see how that plays out with bears in the Arctic. Most of you are familiar with the polar bear, and I'm sure you're also familiar with the grizzly bear. The largest species of grizzly bears are known as the Kodiak bear, and they are very recently diverged evolutionarily from the polar bear. Now, the polar bear, as you're aware, uh, is dependent on sea ice. It walks out onto the sea ice where it will then hunt seals that come up to breathe. And that's how it gets the majority of its food source and it's specialized to do that. However, as the sea ice melts, the polar bears are having to look for other food sources. <clears throat> now, they're very similar to brown bears evolutionarily and brown bears or Kodiak bears eat salmon as they come up the river. They're actually the largest land predator there is. Um, but they're not only predators, they're actually omnivores, and the majority of their diet isn't fish, it's actually berries and grasses. So, because both bears are similar evolutionarily, what's going to happen as polar bears move into the range of grizzly bears? I'm sure the salmon wanted to know. So, Generalists are adaptable, and they have similar physio uh, and these bears have very similar physiology to one another. Now, these bears diverged recently, evolutionarily. Will they converge once again? That is yet to be seen. Now let's take a look at a specialist species. Uh, another bear that isn't really a bear. Uh, you've probably heard about is the koala bear. The koala bear is actually a marsupial, and it, the only thing that it eats are eucalyptus leaves. Eucalyptus leaves are toxic, so the bear has to be very specialized in order to digest them and excrete the waste. So as conditions change in Australia and eucalyptus trees maybe uh, cannot survive as well, what's going to happen to the koala bear? That is yet to be seen. So in summary, generalists have a wide tolerance range and they're very adaptable to new conditions. Specialists have a narrow tolerance range and it's harder for them to adapt. I hope that helped. I hope that helped. If you like what you've seen, please hit like and subscribe to Mr. Bernard's YouTube channel. Thanks a lot.